open your newspaper any day of the week and you will find a report from somewhere in the world of someone being imprisoned, tortured or executed because his opinions or religion are unacceptable to his government. The newspaper reader feels a sickening sense of impotence. Yet if these feelings of disgust all over the world could be united into common action, something effective could be done. This is where the first office of Amnesty International was set up. The initial publicity after the 28th of May was more successful than we dared hope. The basement room overflowed with material and upstairs we continued to receive letters from all over the world, letters of support and encouragement. I was spurred into that by reading an article about how two Portuguese students had been uh, arrested and sentenced to imprisonment for drinking a toast to liberty in a Lisbon restaurant. That so outraged me at the time and then I walked up the steps of St. Martin's in the Fields Church out of the underground and went in to see what could really be done effectively to mobilize world opinion. <laughs> Behind each number, behind each position, is a face and a person. A mother, a sister, a brother, or a son. accept this award for Amnesty's million members and supporters around the world. It is they who work for our objectives to secure the release of prisoners of conscience, to stamp out torture, and to end the death penalty. The more who join Amnesty's aim of preserving life, limb, and human dignity, the greater the effect. I will not be around to see the culmination of this end, but I hope my grandchildren will. Once the concentration camps and hell holes of the world were in darkness, now they are lit by the light of the amnesty candle. 
better light a candle than curse the darkness of 